All right, guys. What we got down here is a ganged pair of four pole dual throw relays that I put together and used to interrupt the X, Y, and U axis, uh, axes so that I can swap them around. So X goes to Y, Y goes to U, and U goes to X. Yeah, didn't color code anything, haven't mounted it yet. It's just kind of stuffed in there. It also swaps the um, uh, X and Y limit switches because, oh, and let's show you why. We got, uh, we got our CNC here, and as you can see, it's four feet long, two motors on what I deemed the X axis on my Rudia controller. Because, I mean, come on now. Isn't that the X axis? Uh, the original Y1200 uh, Further Fabrications build says that's the, uh, the Y axis going this way. And that's because, that I found out later, the short axis which he had labeled X, is always the scanning access uh, by default. So if you use light burn or whatever, it scans with the X axis to start with, because most CNC's, the fast scan tree goes back and forth this way, and the Y uh, goes this way. Well, that messes with my head in a Cartesian manner, so I said, screw that, we're gonna go ahead and make this the Y. So I have a Y and an X, and the one I got over here, um, Pardon the mess. If I, if I can get it to come out of its little hole. All right, there we go. I got a rotary axis that I built. And my rotary axis, let's set this down for a second. I'm going to try to do this one handed. My rotary axis is designed to fit on my rails. I got little tiny boards in the V slots, so they line up. <laughs> on the y-axis. Well, that's a pisser because, well, the y-axis has to translate over to the rotary. And the x-axis, which I've got going this direction, has to now be the my y-axis so it can scan. So that ganged pole of relays is designed to do all that for me. And, of course, if I move that axis over to this axis, and actually, no, yeah. And then this axis over to this axis, and this axis is actually gonna wind up going to that axis. Um, so I still have motion control over all three on the panel. Because as you can see, the Rudia 6445 gives me U jog controls. I can't send G code to it or, or streaming code, whatever the DSP uses, but I can jog with it. So I'll still be able to jog what I used to have as an X axis back and forth with those keys. So that if I want, if I move this around a little bit for spacing, I can still line it up at the center of whatever I'm going to engrave. That's the thought. So that's what all that junk down there does. The trick now is I've got it all in, but I don't have power set up to the relay. That'll be next. I got to know if the off state of all those relays and all rewired uh, with my end stops um, still work as they did before. So I. I'm gonna stand back and turn this on, and we're gonna see if that head comes screaming out of the base, or if it actually homes itself properly. Uh, I hate this part, but I love to record boo-boos, so here we go. Ah! All right, no sparks. Let's see what it does. Hot shit, look at that. It's gonna, gonna home. How sweet! The axis responded. Okay, sweet. I hear all the relays clicking, so while the relays are off, I did not lose my Cartesian functionality. It's gonna go back and home, <coughs> home up to the top of the Y. So now, I should be able to move my bed back and forth. Yeah, that works, that works. And bring that back down, sweet! All right, so at least I know before I hit the relay power, it will work in the old Cartesian format that I can use to laser all the normal stuff. Uh, you and I did not do though. I'm gonna shut this back off because I don't like doing anything hot. I have my tether for my fourth axis. Or my, yeah, yeah, I guess it is my fourth axis. This is for my uh, rotary. I didn't check to see if this actually worked. 
All right, so I'm gonna try to do this where everybody can see what the heck I'm doing. It may not work because, there we go, red to red. Yes, these are hand crimped pins, so they're not the straightest things in the world. Okay, screw it. You guys saw what I was trying to do? There. I got it in there, matching sides. I'm gonna let that sit down there. Let's turn this on again and see if it blows up. All right. We have another motor on there. No fire. All right, we're gonna wait for that homing process to finish. And, because it won't release control until that's done. Do, 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 do. All right. So now over here, I should have you up and you down. And hopefully that moves this motor. Yep, all right. We got you back and forth. Awesome. So my rotary still works. I have no idea why it is still going. Yeah, none. I suppose there's supposed to be a limit switch on there somewhere. I won't worry about it uh, because, well, there. I guess you just press on the button and it shuts off. This is meant to be for a handler table normally, so I don't know what its, its default behavior is, but it works. So I've got all my axes. Now, this was going to be my laser fire button, but I found out that I don't really need it because all I got to do, or my laser arming button, is just send 0% uh, to my code if I wanted to try all the tracing at high speed without firing the laser. So I don't really need this, but I need another switch for rotary or not. So this is going to be my rotary mode and my non-rotary mode, and then I'll have a um, separate config file in Lightburn that I'll send to the Ruta that has all of the step counts that work for this beastie um, to switch over. So all I have to do is switch over the config, click the button, and bam, I'm in rotary mode. And yeah, that's the idea.